Hello, welcome to episode 18, and I think I figured out the problem with uh, what I, the, the slowdown I was getting last week. There's a memory leak in Mono and in Cam Studio. Uh, I think it's the same memory leak, um, so I have to close them down between episodes or, uh, or everything slows way down uh, to the point of unusability. But hopefully we won't have that problem today, and we're going to go ahead and make ourselves the next little bit of our game. And that would be, we're going to make a ship that just barely starts to fight back. Um, previously we had this, uh, I go here into the garden, previously we had this test ship, and it actually does not fight back. It doesn't actually comprehend the concept of fighting. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, create a script. There we go. Drag it onto the dummy ship and open it up. So the thing we're going... oh yeah, we have to actually put a weapon on the ship too. Uh, here we are. Dummy weapon. So the thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that it simply fires its weapon if the player ship or any enemy ship is within range. keep bumping that, sorry. So uh, we're going to need a function which actually gets a list of all of the ships in range. So let's go ahead and put in the generics. And for this we're actually just going to return the, uh, the primary player ship. So we have this as an object? No, we don't. That's fine. We'll go ahead and put it up. And this is kind of just a shortcut that we... We have other ways of getting this information if we need it. But uh, just for the sake of, of quick development here, that's what we'll use. Uh, so, a list ship enemies equals new list and then we'll just return the player ship with a uh, enemies dot add uh, persistent player ship dot active player ship dot get component ship and that'll get the ship component of the persistent player ship return enemies and then we're going to make another generic little function here called uh, get uh, priority enemy list ship enemies. And we're going to go ahead and uh, return enemies zero. We're also going to have a variant on this which doesn't take any arguments and that just return get priority enemy get enemy ships. That way we can call it without separating the two out. Alright, so for our enemy ship controller, we're going to need a public ship current priority enemy. And later on, we're going to need a lot more behavior, but for now, that'll work okay. Alright, so now we have the current priority enemy. Oh, too many equals there. We have uh, the current priority enemy, that is to say, us. And so now we're just going to go ahead and uh, call fire. Um, we could, we're going to make this smarter in a couple of minutes, but for right now, the weapon itself understands uh, that, that it, it, the weapon itself understands what it can fire on. Uh, speaking of which, We need to actually have the ship component because it actually handles the things like understanding the fire controls. There we go. Uh, and then we just do get uh, current priority enemy dot transform dot position and true. And this should actually make it so that that dummy ship fires on us, and we should actually be able to see the arc of fire that it can unleash on us. Oh, I I have to actually start in the. Uh, sorry, I have to start in the correct 
There we go. Alright, so now we're here. Let's go to here. Alright, so you can see our arc of fire nice and clear, and you can also see the dummy ship's arc of fire. Let's go ahead and see whether it fires on us, shall we? Yep. Now obviously it's just firing willy-nilly and it ran out of juice completely. You can see how it's stuck at a permanent 1% because it's continually trying to fire its weapon at us. I think the dummy ship might only have 1 HP. So now we have a dummy ship that can fire on us. The next step is to make it turn towards us and maybe you know, uh, uh, move towards us and that sort of stuff. This is where AI starts to get a little complicated. There's a lot of ways of programming an AI uh, enemy, uh, and uh, that the, the variations and and best practices are beyond the scope of this tutorial. So we're going to be programming a very simple AI. Um, so for our AI, we're going to need, we're going to assume for now that all the AI wants to do is point directly at the enemy and be roughly the right distance away. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, turn towards the player ship. Um, the problem is that as the ship itself is currently set up, it doesn't have a concept of turning towards a player ship. Uh, the, uh, the actual ship object doesn't handle the turning that's handled within the player uh, the player controls and that was actually on purpose because the uh, the ship itself handling the turning means that I would have to map the enemy ship controls to a left right control scheme when it's far easier for us to map the enemy ship controls to a target position so let's go ahead and go into the player ship controls which is a different script that's not open uh, uh, ship controls, there it is, and we'll just grab the uh, the thing that turns. Um, here it is, because we need that. Uh, we don't actually need that exact stuff, but we can use it for reference real quick here. So we're going to go ahead and say um, uh, ship dot transform dot rotation equals. Actually, we can just use transform dot rotation because we are our ship uh, equals quaternion dot lerp. Uh, and then we do from is transform.rotation to is quaternion.look at uh, and then we just do current priority enemy dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. So we're gonna look in the direction of our enemy, but we're gonna go ahead and use this as our alert value. There we go. So now it'll turn to look at us. Shall we see what that's like? Let's go to Elam Arbag. Oh. <laughs> it sure locked on quick, didn't it? Now obviously this was just the very, very first basics of what we're going to be doing in the long run. Um, the last thing I'll do for this episode, to keep it short so that I don't have tons and tons of crap episodes all lined up, uh, but I am going to go ahead and change the materials for that fire arc to a much, much more transparent material, because um, that is far, far too opaque. And that's all for today.